Hmm. What camera should I buy? What brand should I go with? What would you recommend for my budget? I've been asked these questions so many times, so I want to make a video specifically on what qualities make up a great sports camera. So the first thing that I'll tell people most commonly when looking for a sports camera is that that camera shoots at least 10 frames per second or higher. So the reason why I personally feel that this is so important and I have it listed as number one is because you do not want to miss out on capturing the perfect moment. I know that some people might disagree with me saying this, but if you don't get the moment, then there's no point in having a really high quality camera. For example, at the start of my career, I owned the 1DX Mark II and even though it was the best camera for its time, I still wasn't able to take great photos because I didn't have a great process lockdown. So it really didn't matter what camera I had because I was still an amateur. So that's why I believe that having the capability to shoot really high frames per second can really determine the kinds of photos that you're able to produce. I've taken tens of thousands of photos, if not hundreds of thousands of photos, and the difference between a good shot and a great shot is honestly just the difference between a split second. For example, let's look at the shoot that I did. In this environment, I was trying to capture my subject right in the pocket between these two trees because it would separate them from the environment that they were in. And if I didn't have the capability to follow my rider through that scene, then I probably would have missed out on that shot. I know some people might be wondering, well, why can't you just have really good timing to capture that shot? Honestly, to have perfect precision of when you press that shutter as well as the timing of your athlete, capturing that exact moment that you want is gonna be near impossible. With sports, the action is always unfolding in a different way and it's always so unpredictable. So it's so nice to have the capability to capture each different moment and make sure that you overshoot rather than undershoot. And especially when working with clients, you always wanna send off that jaw dropping shot that they can look at and be like, wow, that timing was perfect. And that's mainly due to getting that precision with that high frames per second. The second thing that qualifies a really great sports camera, in my opinion, is really fast autofocus. I don't really have to go too in depth on this because most camera manufacturers nowadays are producing really great autofocus in their camera bodies. But for the people that are starting out looking for a more affordable option, maybe looking into DSLRs, that's something that you might have to think about and it's really something good to research out before you go and buy a camera. Some of the older pro DSLR bodies might still be out of your budget range, so if you are looking for something even more affordable, then just go on Google, type in whatever camera you're looking for, type in autofocus behind that, and then you should have like some Reddit forum or I mean, even go on a ChatGPT, that's gonna be a great resource for you because ChatGPT generally will tell you whether or not it's gonna be good for sports or it's not gonna be good for sports. The third thing that I look for is battery life. Having a camera that lasts a long time when you're taking photos is really important. Having to constantly change your batteries while you're out taking photos is so annoying because it honestly breaks up the flow of your photo shoot and it can also be really stressful. Like if you're running out of batteries in a really cold day, and it just drains the batteries right down. And you might be wondering if you'll have enough battery life to get through the rest of the day. But if you choose a camera with good battery life, then those are some of the things that you won't have to stress about. It's also a really expensive purchase to buy a ton of batteries, and then it's also a hassle to have to take those around with you everywhere you go. The fourth qualifying factor is the camera sensor. The sensor that your camera has ultimately can play a huge role in the low light scenarios as well as the image quality that comes out of your camera. When you're shooting sports, you're always gonna get put into those low light scenarios that aren't really ideal and your camera sensor is gonna determine how clean your image is. A full frame sensor opposed to a crop sensor is gonna do a lot better in low light. Full frame cameras allow more light to hit each pixel, which in turn results in improved signal to noise ratio. Now this isn't only just determined by the sensor size, but also things like if it's backside illuminated, if it has advanced in-camera noise reduction, and the pixel size can affect the low light performance. Honestly, I don't really feel too qualified to be talking about these things specifically but for whatever camera you're looking into like I said there's always Google there's ChatGPT and there's also YouTube for the camera that you're probably specifically looking at there's probably a ton of videos out there that you can look into on the sensor specifically so that's something that you could go dig into personally in terms of image quality though obviously the higher megapixels your camera can shoot the more you can crop into your image which can definitely be a big benefit to give you a comparison though my eight-year-old Canon 1DX Mark II has a 20 megapixel image sensor or my Canon R5C has a 45 megapixel sensor I personally still feel that the 20 megapixel sensor from the 1DX still produces some really clean images so I would still say that's really relevant for today it's not always necessary to have the highest megapixel count when you're just starting out that's just something I wish I would have told my younger self the fifth thing that I look for is weather sealing now this is another really hard one to cover because I feel like a lot of camera manufacturers do this really well within their cameras but there are some cameras that don't really support this type of shooting most times when you're shooting outdoor sports you're gonna encounter things like rain dust mud sand there's all kinds of different elements that you're gonna encounter and a lot of it 
for sure is definitely taking care of your gear and making sure that it's protected in the first place. But there are going to be instances where you can't always protect your gear or necessarily be in an environment where it's just so run and gun that you can't always set up to have that protection around your gear. So it's nice just to have that confidence to say, okay, my gear says that it's weather sealed and I don't have to worry as much and I'm just gonna clean it off, make sure that it's nice and clean after I'm done shooting. And that's something definitely to make sure that you do because you don't want your gear to break down over time, which I've done in the past. I haven't cleaned my gear the way that I should. Now I'm doing that a lot more. But the thing that I do love about these pro bodies that do shoot sports is that they are really weather sealed. And I've put my 1DX through the paces where that thing has been drenched. I think that I've let that thing sit wet for a full day and I didn't clean it off because I forgot about it. So definitely don't do that, but it turned out fine. Like the camera still works great. That camera, in my opinion, is bulletproof, but not all camera manufacturers are gonna be that good. So obviously it is good to take care of your gear, but weather sealing can really save you from all those really expensive repair costs for little minor things like maybe dust getting in the back of the camera and it just messes up the camera. These weather seal cameras are really great and they function really great as well. I'm gonna give you two bonus things that I think are really worth mentioning. The first thing is does the camera that you're looking into have really great video features? Honestly, with the rise of social media and content creation, it's really started to push photographers into the video sphere because Honestly, whether we like it or not, clients are looking for both video and photo, and if we want to serve our clients to the highest capacity and realistically land jobs, sometimes we have to provide both video and photo, so it's nice to have the capability to provide them with that. And if you're only interested in photo now, at least it future-proofs you for the future when you look to get into video. It can also help you too if you're looking to make content for yourself on your social media, like to create reels or TikTok and things like that. So it's always just really good things to think about. The really basic thing that I would look for is does it shoot 4K? Does it shoot 120 frames per second, even if it's in 1080p? And does it have decent dynamic range? Those three things I think are a really good starting base when you're looking for a camera that also does photo and video. The second bonus thing that I think is really important that you want to think about when looking for a camera is the type of camera brand you want to go with. It's a big thing to realize that whatever camera brand you go with, it is an investment into that brand because Realistically, if you try and sell your camera lenses or your camera bodies down the line to switch brands completely, that's gonna be a really expensive cost because you're gonna be losing money to go and sell all your equipment and then go buy brand new. There have been times where I've wanted to switch camera brands and honestly, I just couldn't afford to switch. Don't get me wrong, I still love Canon, but there are features in other cameras that I kinda am tempted by and I would really love. But then again, it just comes down to being comfortable with the camera brand that you go with and just realizing that whatever brand you're going with, most likely you're gonna be sticking with that brand for five years, 10 years, even 15 years. It just depends on how much money you make, if you can get your investment back, and then as well, if you are looking to sell, is that gonna make sense to you, depending on where you wanna go with your career. So it's just all good things that I wish I would've told myself from the start. But if you would like to know more about the action sports photography camera that I'm using on a daily basis and I have been using for the last two years, I think that you'll like this video because I'm breaking down the Canon R5C, the things that I love about that camera, some of the things that I don't necessarily like. But I think that video still would be really helpful, so go check it out. I'll see you over there. Peace.